Hello guys, uh, welcome back to motives. Uh, let us try to check uh, and see what we have on this question, which is on the measurement uh, that is our grade 10 mathematics. Uh, remember we talked about this uh, and analyzed our our like uh, formulas that we are going to apply in each and every part. So here we've got a scenario that you're going to consider on question number seven, where you are given in this case, a foil run is designed, that is a foil run is designed in the shape of a cone. So this is our foil run in this case, which is in the shape of a cone. Then we are given a hemispherical bowel, which is the bowel that you have of water is placed close close by for the chickens to drink from it. So there we have got uh, a half of a sphere, which is a hemispherical uh, bowel in this case. So this is just a hemisphere, which is half of a sphere. If you complete this, it was going to give us a complete sphere, but half of it, that's a hemisphere. So we are given that the cone and the hemisphere are drawn as shown in the diagram. So like I said, we've got uh, our cone here. And on this side, we have got our hemisphere in this case, all right, which is half of a half of a sphere. So the question is, or, or the information that we are also given is that the total surface area of a cone is given. So this is the total surface area, whereby remember for a cone, you are going to have the perpendicular height that is taken at 90 degrees from the radius. And this is your slant height. This is another height but it's referred to as a slant height. It's a special type of a height that you have again, but referred to as a slant height. So there we have our slant height, all right? Then our perpendicular height, our radius, then where S is the slant height, we are given that of a cone, all right? So we are given the total surface area of a cone, then also the total surface area of a hemisphere, which is three pi r squared. Remember, uh, this is simply taken to say uh, for a hemisphere, I mean, for a full sphere, the total surface area is four pi r squared. This is the total surface area that you're gonna have if it is a sphere. So if you talk of a, half, uh, of a hemisphere, it's a half, this one, it's a half that we see. So meaning to say, that part is going to be taken if you divide by two, which is two pi r squared. So we have got a half of a sphere, this one, which is uh, two pi r squared. Then we also have a circle on top, which is going to give us uh, pi r squared. So if you combine this uh, two pi r squared plus one pi r squared, that is where you end up with this three pi r squared that we see. But here we are not formulating anything. We are just answering our questions, guys, all right? So this I'm just saying uh, so that you can properly understand where this three pi r squared was taken from. So the question is that the radius of both the cone and the hemisphere is given as x units, all right? So we are saying in this case, the radius is equal to x for both, all right? This is the statement that we are given. Then it is further given that the total surface area of the cone is equal to the total surface area of the hemisphere. Find an expression for H, that is the perpendicular height, which is our height in this case of the cone, in terms of X, whereby X represents what the radius, because we said the radius, it represents X. So the question is, we are supposed to write H in terms of what? in terms of x. Our answer must be h in terms of x at the end. That is, we are supposed to make h the subject, but given this statement that you are told that the total uh, surface area of the cone, we're just gonna work with that statement along this part. The total uh, surface area of a cone to the total surface area of a hemisphere that they are equal. What is it that you are going to get from this statement. You are going to equate this to because you are given here the total surface area of a cone, which is pi r squared plus pi r s. So we are simply saying uh, pi r squared uh, plus pi r s in this case, which is the slant height is equal to, that is the total surface area of a cone. It must be equal to what? 
to the total surface area of a hemisphere and our hemisphere, its total surface area is given as three pi r squared. So it's an equation that we have formulated in this case. All right, so we formulated an equation. So as you can see, it has got nothing to do with these diagrams. Yes, there's just there to, to show us what we, we what it means or what it represents. And we are given that the radius is equal to x for each part that we see. So meaning to say, where there is this radius, where we see our radius here, yeah, where we see our radius, we are going to put x because radius is equal to x from this statement. So we are going to substitute here, here, and here we are going to put x. So that means we are going to have pi in place of r, we're going to have x squared plus pi in place of r, we're gonna put x, and this is s, which is equal to three, pi in place of r here, we're gonna put x, which is x squared, because you're told that the radius is equal to x. So the question is from this part that we see here, how can we make h the subject that we do not even have? Because as we can see, we even do not have our h. We do not have h in this case. So we are going back to say, where is it that we have our h? All right. So we're gonna go back where we have our edge here. This is uh, our edge. It is obtained from a relationship that can be, uh, edge is on our cone. And from this part, you can see that we are forming a right angled triangle here. We are given this part here. It is forming a right angled triangle at the end. So meaning to say, we can use our Pythagoras theorem to say that this S squared must be equal to the square of these two shorter sides so that we see where h can be obtained. So from our Pythagoras theorem, uh, from our Pythagoras uh, theorem, in that case, we are going to see that uh, hypotenuse squared, all right, let us just write in form of our formula. We know that hypotenuse squared, which is c, is equal to a squared plus b squared, which are the shorter sides where this is the hypotenuse, and this case, our hypotenuse is S, which is the one that is opposite or that faces the 90 degrees, which is S. So S squared is equal to the square of X and H, all right? So you're gonna have X and H being squared. So it means S squared is going to be X squared plus H squared. So as we can see from our Pythagoras theorem, we are obtaining an equation that is related or that we can use, which is representing in this case or where we have H. So as we can see, H can be found either in terms of S or it can be found in terms of X, depending with what we have. So meaning to say here, in order for us to be able to substitute where there is S and substitute H, H what we can do is to make this the subject, all right? So that we obtained, because we know that S squared is equal to X squared plus H squared. So whatever that you're going to get there, you can simply square it. So as we can see from this formula, it simply means that here, we are going to focus with S because S squared is equal to something that carries what? That carries H. So we are going to make our S the subject in this case. Since it is the one that carries what? That carries H at the end. So if we make S the subject, we can transpose this part to the other side of the equation so that it can be subtracted. It was a positive on this side. So it is going to be taken here as a negative, all right? So that means you are going to have, you're going to be left with this part of pi X S, which is the one that is going to remain because you transposed this to the other side. So what is going to remain is pi X S, which is equal to uh, three pi X squared. You transpose this to the other side, it becomes minus pi X squared. But as we can see, these are actually like terms that we see because we are given pi and this is pi, this is X squared, we also have X squared. So we can subtract this part. So that means if we subtract, we are going to be left with pi X S, which is equal to three 
minus one, which is two. So that is going to be two pi x squared. So what we want, remember, is to make us the subject and what is affecting us this time is the pi x, which is multiplying. This part here is multiplying as so. How do you remove this? You divide by pi x so that you get rid of this. So you divide by pi x, you also divide by pi x on this side so that the pi and the pi will cancel, the x and the x will cancel. You remain with what? You remain with s. So this was going to give us uh, s, which is equal to, on this side, again, we can see that there is pi here, there is pi, so this can cancel, and x squared divided by x, we are going to subtract because we are dividing uh, the same, we are, we are the same powers, so you're gonna subtract your exponents in this case, that's x to the exponent of two minus one, which is x to the exponent of one, which is just same as x. So that means you're going to remain with two times x, which is x. If you divide these two, you obtain x. So that is gonna be two x. All right, guys, I do not want you to confuse this. Remember what we want, our question is, this is our question here, this is our question, do not forget. This is our question. The question is, we are supposed to find h in terms of x, h in terms of x. If we go back to the part of our Pythagoras theorem where we got this scenario that I explained that s squared is equal to x squared plus h squared. Remember, this is the scenario that we explained that we are going to make as the subject from this so that we can relate to the s squared that we have because it carries h. Yes, you could have that maybe the subject you substituted there, but it was going to be a complicated. So it was easier if we make that s to be the subject as what we see. But this is not s, it's s squared. So in order for you to equate these two, because this is given as s squared, but s is given as 2x. So you're simply going to substitute here, this s, right? Just like you've got equation one and you've got equation two, just take it that way. So you're going to substitute your equation one where s is equal to 2x. You substitute where s here is given. So that means, all right, if we substitute, uh, substitute in this case, uh, s is equal to 2x, this one, into uh, equation two. So I'm just gonna write this as, because we've got like an equation, like as for this statement. So if we are to take this and put it here, where there is s squared, it is going to be given as uh, 2x. You square that because this is a squared. So that's 2x squared is equal to x squared plus h squared. Remember guys, we want to have our answer h in terms of x, there must be x. So we have eliminated or we have removed this part of s and substituted with the equivalent value for that, which is what? 2x. That is the most important part. So that you are just left with h, x, and x. And there you can find h in terms of x, right? So remember from our laws that we're going to raise this to the exponent of to everything. Uh, a, b to the exponent of n is a to the exponent of n b to the exponent of n. So that means we've got two to the exponent of two, which is going to give us a four, that's two times two, which is a four, and x also being raised to the exponent of two. All right, which is equal to x squared plus h. We are almost there now, because here we just have to make h the subject because we want h in terms of x. So transpose this to the other side, it becomes a minus, uh, all right, which is equal to h squared. So if you're gonna subtract this four minus one, that is a three. So we're gonna have three x squared, which is equal to h squared. So to obtain h, gonna get rid of that exponent, introduce the square root to remove a square. Remember you introduce a square root. So that is going to be the square root. It covers everything up to this x squared, up to the end there, all right? So that is the square root of three. We can't determine the square root of three. So it just remains as the square root of three. Remember that 
the square root can be distributed, can be actually separated A times B like this can be given as A under the square root times the square root of B. So if I am given the square root of three, uh, X squared like this, it means I've got the square root of three, which is our A, and this will be times the square root of X squared. So the square root of three cannot be determined, which is this one, but we can simplify or we can determine the square root of X squared. Remember the square root and X and squared, they cancel. It simply means X squared over two, which is gonna give us X. So meaning to say, this is going to give us X. The square root of X squared is going to be X out of this, not part of this square root. The square root is only affecting three because we can't determine the square root of three direct, all right? If it was uh, maybe a number that you can determine its square root, therefore you are supposed to determine, maybe it was the square root of nine uh, X squared. You can determine the square root of nine, which is three, the square root of X squared, which is X, because you could have divided by two here, which will give you X. But this one, we can't determine the square root of three. That's why it remains under the square root. So be careful when you're answering these types of uh, questions, all right? Then we are back here. Remember, just like the square root of X squared, the square root of H squared is going to be H, because you're gonna divide uh, two, by two, which gives us a one and h to the exponent of one is h. So that's our h in terms of x. So we can just give it as a conclusion to say, therefore, our h is equal to the square root of three times x like that. So we now have our x as the subject of the formula. Like we have made x the sub, we have made h the subject that is to write our answer or h in terms of x. H in terms of x. So this is what you just need. We are told that this total surface area of a cone is equal to the total surface area of a hemisphere. So I'm going to actually work the same type of equation, this one that you're having in another way, because this type uh, or the working, you might understand another way of simplifying, but at the end, you are going to obtain uh, the same answer uh, whereby we have h in terms of x at the end. So it's just have to work with more question papers so that you understand how do they ask this type of a question.